Hi folks, hope you're okay today. It's good to be with you. <laughs> Sorry about this. It's good to be with you and uh, we're having a Bible study uh, in the backyard or in the garden. So if you'd like to turn to uh, 1, one uh, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 5, uh, 2 Timothy uh, chapter 5 and um, we're looking at the Word of God and it, uh, sorry uh, 2 Timothy 2 Corinthians chapter 5 2 Corinthians chapter 5 for we know that if our earthly home of this tabernacle were dissolved we have a building of God a house not made with hands eternal in the heavens for in this we groan earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house which is from heaven if so be that being clothed we shall not be found naked for we that are in this tabernacle do groan being burdened not for that we would be unclothed but clothed upon the mortality might be swallowed up of life now he that hath wrought us for the self same thing is God who also hath given unto us the earnest of the spirit therefore we are always confident knowing that whilst we are at home in the body we are absent from the Lord for we walk by faith not by sight we are confident I say and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Wherefore we labour that whether present or absent we may be accepted of him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that every one may receive the things done in the body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad, knowing therefore the terror of the Lord. We persuade men, but we are made manifest unto God. Sorry. We are made manifest unto God. And I, <coughs> sorry, and I also trust, made manifest in your conscience, says, For we commend us not ourselves again, but unto you, but give you occasion to glory on our behalf, that you may be somewhat to answer them which glory in appearance and not in heart. For whether we beside ourselves, it is to God, or whether we be sober, it is for your cause. For the love of Christ constraineth us, because we thus judge, that if one died for all, then we all dead. And that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. Wherefore henceforth know we no man after the flesh, ye though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know him we no more. Therefore if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature, all things are passed away, behold, all things are come new. All things are of God, and hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and has given to us the ministry of reconciliation, to wit that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and have committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be you reconciled to God. For he have made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. I'm just going to pray. Father, we just praise you and thank you for this day. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your mercies. And I just pray that this Bible study will be a blessing to people's lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If you turn to 2, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 20, it says, Now that we are ambassadors of Christ, as though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be you reconciled to God. So we're ambassadors of Christ, and the context of this passage is in chapter 4, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Paul is going under a tremendous stress. And, and yet he's still not backing down. He's still following and being an ambassador. In an American football, the guy who gets the ball uh, waits till another guy runs across the pitch and then he can throw it. But if there are guys around him trying to get the ball off him, if he collapses then he loses 
points for his team. We need, we, we are not to collapse, we are not to cave in under the pressures of secularism and the pressure of the, the, the rise of evil in the nations today. So number one, we are ambassadors for Christ, as ambassadors for Christ, take comfort from the home they have in heaven. Ambassadors for Christ, take comfort from the home they have in heaven. Sometimes the challenges can be too hard, sometimes the challenges can be too difficult, but we need to know we have a home in heaven. Verse 1 of 2 Corinthians chapter 5, For we know that, our, that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, a house not made with hands eternal in the heavens. You could read to verse 5, Now he that is wrought in us self same thing is God, who also has given unto us the earnest of the Spirit. God has won the victory for us in Christ, and we've been given the earnestness of the Spirit, the, the, sent, the, the presence of the Holy Spirit. Now the Greek there, when he says the earnest of the Spirit, is the idea of an engagement ring where uh, if you get engaged to somebody, you have an engagement ring. And that promise is kind of signifies the, the, the fruit of you're going to get married. And the Holy Spirit is like an engagement read showing us that God has made a promise that he's going to keep, that we're going to be with him in glory. And this is a great encouragement to us. When we're battered and beleaguered and the enemies seem to rise against us, just remember that we have a home in heaven. If you read Philippians chapter 3, verse 20 to 21, if we could turn to that, always have your Bible and check it when I'm preaching or teaching. Philippians chapter 3 verse 20 says For our conversation is in heaven from whence also we look for the Savior the Lord Jesus Christ who shall change our vile body that may be fashioned like unto his glorious body according to the working where he is able even to subdue things unto himself We are we, we are a heavenly people we have a heavenly home and it might get tough it might get difficult but we have a home and that is an encouragement to us in these days Secondly, ambassadors for Christ fear God rather than men. It's fashionable today to ridicule Christianity and to ridicule Christians. To tell Christians to shut up and that if they speak out, they're, they're offensive. But if you read 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10 and 14, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he had done, whether it be good or bad. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, but we are made manifest unto God, and I trust also are made manifest in your consciences. For we commend not ourselves again unto you, but give you occasion to glory on our behalf, that you may have somewhat to answer them, which glory in appearance and not in heart. For whether we beside ourselves, it is to God, and whether we be sober, it is for your cause. Verse 14. For the love of Christ constrain us, because we thus judge that if one die for all, then we are all dead. We're not to fear God, we're not to fear man, but to fear God. Here Paul is saying, look, there is a judgment to come in, and I fear that judgment dear for the people who will come under it. And the love of Christ constrains me to go out and reach out. doesn't matter what the world thinks, doesn't matter what the wishy-washy church thinks, I fear God rather than man. If you read uh, Acts chapter 14, Acts chapter 14, Uh, verse 19 to 24. There came hither certain Jews from Antioch and Iconium, Iconium who persuaded the people and have stoned Paul, drew him out of the city, supposing he had been dead. Albeit as the disciples stood around about him, he rose up and came into the city. The next day he departed with Barnabas to Derb. When they had preached the gospel to that city, he taught many, and they returned again to Lysteria and to Iconium and Antioch, confirming the souls of the disciples and exalting them to continue in the faith, and that we must, through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of God. Paul was battered, but he just didn't give in. He just went back and preached. And it doesn't matter what the world throws at us. It doesn't matter what a wishy-washy church throws at us. We've got to be faithful and fear God rather than men. Isaiah 58 verse 1 says, lift up your voice. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 19, look these verses up. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 19 talks about Paul is pray, praying that and asking for prayer that he would speak boldly and we've got to speak boldly. We've got to lift up our voice, we've got to speak boldly. And if we turn to Jeremiah 1 verse 17, Jeremiah 1 verse 17, 
Jeremiah 1, chapter 1, verse 17 says, Thou therefore gird up the loins of the, and arise and speak unto them all that I command thee. Be not dismay, dismayed at their faces, lest I confound thee before them. We're not to fear, look. It says, you know, arise, be not dismayed of their faces. We mustn't be fearful of Islam or secularism or whatever ism comes against us. Read Ezekiel chapter 2, verse 6 and 8, and Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 9 and 11. At the end of the day, when it gets tough, we mustn't give in and continue. In Acts chapter 18, verse 9 to 11, Paul is finding it very difficult. He's finding it ever so hard. But we read in these words in Acts chapter 18. Acts chapter 18, verse 9 and 11. Then spoke the Lord to Paul in the night by a vision, Be not afraid, but speak, and hold not thy peace. So Paul needed encouragement. If the Apostle Paul needed encouragement, you and I need encouragement. It's not wrong. You know, don't feel ashamed of yourself if you feel battered and beleaguered. Sometimes we get like that. But even Paul needed to be encouraged. You know, so take heart. And God will encourage you in these difficult days. He will stand by you. Acts 23, verse 11. Acts 27, 23, you can read those verses and God stands by his people and he'll stand by you. So number one, uh, you know, we have a home in heaven. Number two, ambassadors for Christ fear God rather than men. And number three, ambassadors for Christ are salt and light. As an ambassador, if you go to another country, you represent that country. Uh, that you've been sent by so if we're ambassadors for America we're sent by America and we have to walk the walk for America and talk the talk for America we can't act in a wrong way and we can't speak a wrong message and that's what God says to us today he, he says that we've got to be salt we turn to uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17 Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Be behold, all things have become new. All things have become new. You know, we're new creatures in Christ and we're to live a godly life. 1 John chapter 3, verse 3. 1 John chapter 3, verse 3. It says, And every man that hath this hope in him purify himself, even as he is pure. The Satan is trying to get a foothold in your life. He's trying to get a foothold of darkness in your life trying to bring you back to the old ways but the Bible says you're a new creature in Christ so don't be a dog going back to its vomit don't be a person going back to your old ways but continue in the new life in Christ fight those sins fight those things that are pulling you down and continue to go forward in him you can read Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10 and 18 where it talks about uh, getting the armor of God Ephesians 6 verse 10 and 18 get in the armor of God so we so we we're new creatures in Christ the day we became the day we believed in Jesus as our Lord and Savior that was the day that our old life has gone and we are now in a new life and we need to get our minds around that and understand that spiritually speaking so we're salt we're to be li living the life and then we're to preach the message verse 18 uh, 2 Corinthians 5:18. And all things are of God, and who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation, to wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Reconciliation means that God's wrath is no longer against us, but his wrath has been appeased by the blood of Jesus, that Jesus died and took the punishment that you and I deserved. There's an old quote by Luther who talks about that Jesus died as a murderer, as a thief, as a, an adulterer. He died in our place and he was perfect. And he took the wrath that we deserved and he did no wrong. And he died on your behalf so that you could have a life. And that is the love of Christ, that he would die for sinners and give his life a ransom for us. What an amazing saviour. 1 John chapter 2 verse 2 says he's a propitiation. That word propitiation is taken out by many modern Bible translations. And the reason it is is because the propitiation has the idea not only of atonement but the appeasement of God's wrath. 
And modern Bible translations don't like that. If you turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 1, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, One Corinthians chapter one verse twenty one. For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. But here's this: here it is. But we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block, and unto the Greeks foolishness. We preach the cross. We preach Christ crucified. There's so much pressure today by the modern church to to water down the gospel there was a minister a woman minister who was on the news the other day on ITV or BBC I can't remember which channel but a big channel and she was saying the church has got to get over sin and not be preaching sin and 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 just talk about the love of God I'm sorry but that's just total nonsense that's just not biblical let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and look at verse 21, for he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be the righteousness of God in him. He's saying here that Christ died for our sin. He died as a punishment for our sin. We can't sugarcoat it or water it down just because uh, modern man or the modern church doesn't like it. We preach the love of God, but we preach the holiness of God, and we also preach the wrath of God. We preach the cross. And if a church doesn't preach the cross, if a church doesn't pre preach the ministry of reconciliation, then it's not a biblical church. And you are, you are under pressure at the moment as ministers and preachers and servants of God, youth leaders, Sunday school teachers, uh, people who are working in ministries in, in, in uh, organizations that are Christian. You're under tremendous pressure to capitulate, to change the message to suit the era, to suit the times. Don't preach on sin. Don't mention sin. Don't, don't, just water it down a little bit. Just a little bit. Make it more palatable to the world. That's the temptation. But if you do that, that's no longer a gospel. That's the gospel of man, not the gospel of God. And, and you are custodians of this gospel and you must stand for the gospel. You must never change it or dilute it or manipulate it to suit the modern mind. No, you stay faithful to the message of the gospel. You stay faithful. You never, ever, ever change it. People like Latimer and Ridley and William Tyndale and Wycliffe and many, many others were martyred for the gospel. And now you want to change it? You want to uh, mold it to the modern mind? That's an anathema to God, but it's also uh, you're turning over the graves of these great men and women who serve God and preach the gospel, and now you want to just water it down to suit the modern age. And don't believe Satan's lie. Oh, oh, we need to preach love, we need to show love. Of course we do. But we need to preach sin and holiness, and we need to preach the wrath of God, and if we don't, then we're not preaching the gospel. We're just preaching a message that we created out of our own mind, and it's not actually biblical. Be warned, once you start to tamper with the gospel, it was only within a few years your church will be secularized, period. It will be secular, secularized within a generation. It will be secularized, I guarantee. So never ever, ever go down the road of watering down the gospel. Galatians chapter one, read that if you get a chance. And read uh, 1 Corinthians chapter one. Um, so, anyhow, our final conclusion now. So, in conclusion, we might feel like as ambassadors we're outnumbered, there aren't many of us, and we haven't got the numbers to deal with the challenges that we face. Well, <coughs> think of Esther. There was only Esther and Mordecai. They did great things. Think of Jonah. One man went into Nineveh. He did great things. Think of Gideon. <coughs> One, uh, a few, 300 men did great things, Day, uh, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, four men, they did great things. It Numbers doesn't matter. If you are following God, a handful of people can have a, a whole influence on a nation. So numbers aren't the key, it's faithfulness to God. So let's just turn our last passage to Revelation chapter 19. Revelation chapter 19 verse 8 to 16, but we'll read verse 16 I think. And he had on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. 
and you can read that verses read the verses uh, chapter 19 Revelation 19 verse 8 to 16 and reading verse 16 and he had on his vesture and on his thigh a name written King of Kings and Lord of Lords he is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords he is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords he's the King of Kings and Lord of Lords he is in control of history when he died on that cross and rose again we'd won we've won the battle every knee will have to bow before him every knee will have to tell them will have to bow before Jesus when we're preaching out there we're preaching a message that is either bow the knee now or you'll bow it later so my friend we need to preach and be faithful in our generation we need to meditate much about the glories to come it's going to get tough in this life as we serve the Lord as the end comes the persecution is going to ratchet up the the, the the pain and the suffering for the gospel is going to go more and more harder and we need to think much on heaven and, 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 and what the reward is in heaven but as we go forward there's going to be more and more pressure by the secular states and, and Islamic states and all, all the other nations that they're going to come against the gospel they're going to try and stop the gospel and we must decide right now no we fear God rather than men and we will not shut up we will proclaim the gospel and we will tell people about the truth of Christ. You see, when we listen to the enemy, when they tell us to shut up and we shut up, we've allowed the enemy to take the ground. Ah, we are ambassadors of Christ and his eternal kingdom, and we have a duty, a responsibility, and a right to proclaim against darkness, and we will not give ground to the enemy. And on top of that, we need to make sure that we walk a godly life. Don't let the enemy get a foothold, because the world wants to look at us, point us, and say, ha ha, call yourself a Christian and then we need to make sure that we don't change that message that message stays the same Christ crucified it's not up for debate it's not up for compromise that's the message that's what we preach if you don't like it go and find another church if you don't like it don't hang around with us this is the true gospel and we will not compromise it come what may and it doesn't matter about we're only a few people God can do great things with a few people and in the end he is the Lord of Lords and King of Kings he is over everything, and we have the victory. Hope well, that's been a blessing. Let's close in prayer. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your love and your blessings. We give you the prayers and the glory. And I pray that this message will be a blessing to people who heard it. In the name of Jesus, and for your glory, Lord. Amen. Amen.